Dr. Joseph Feldman, chairman of the ER, says the idea will save lives. A lot of patients that come into the emergency department, they're either unable to or unwilling to because of the anxiety or pain that they might be in to give us accurate and timely information. Dennis Porterfield is having a chip implanted today. He has three stents in his heart and had part of his lung removed because of cancer. Why are you having the uh, chip placed today? Well, I do a little traveling, and I'd like to be assured that no matter where I go, I'll be able to uh, tell doctors what I've had or had done to me and what I'm taking for medicine, etc. Okay. Yep. And that's it. So how did it go? It's a piece of cake. It, uh, there's virtually no pain. The goal of the program is to be in every hospital nationwide. All patients would automatically get scanned to see if they have a Vera chip as soon as they get to the hospital. But there's a problem. Different companies are competing for the same market with slightly different technologies. The big challenge is, is getting the, the medical profession in unison to use the same type of uh, operating system um, so that if, if my patient goes to Orlando, Florida, Disney World and, get, and requires health care, that the, the device that they use in that ER is able to read the chip that we implanted here. Critics say the Vera chip is the ultimate invasion of privacy. It's like Big Brother gone awry. But patients don't see it that way. No one can go into your computer or your chip to find out your information. You have to have a code and a, and a password. Ultimately, it comes down to personal choice, since the Vera chip program is voluntary. For Dennis Porterfield, the decision was easy. Safety thing, I think it's, you know, it's cheap, cheap prevention. Dr. Steve Salvatore, Fox 5 News. The microchip technology is moving like lightning, we're told. There are newer chips already available on the market that update your medial history. You could, that's medical history. You can actually erase data from a chip and put new data down. Modern homes are jam-packed with electronic appliances, but they all work separately from each other. Now engineers have designed a home where the appliances know what's going on around them, and they can make decisions for themselves. Much of Olga Gelbert's life is becoming a big waste of time. That thought is on her mind as she walks through her front door and automatically throws her keys on a nearby shelf. It becomes even more obvious when she brews an after-work pot of coffee and grabs a cool drink from the fridge. As her shopping list grows, so does her belief in the futility of her daily chores. When her friends arrive to watch a movie, Olga knows that much of what she's doing is absolutely unnecessary. Hey, come on Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? And when Olga seats her guests, she feels crushingly frustrated because she can't find her remote control. For Olga, this life is even more aggravating because she knows it doesn't have to be this way. Olga and her friends aren't in a house, they're in a lab. This high-tech research facility at the George Washington University in Virginia is called the home of the 21st century. The people who work here are trying to find out just how the latest technology can change the way we live. We really are trying to look at not only existing technologies, but technologies that are coming down the road that we could integrate into the context of the home to provide uh, services to the occupants, to provide care to the occupants, health care, safety care. And so we're really looking at futuristic applications in the context of the existing home that we're all living in. Computers and sensors around the house are being tested to see what they have to offer and how they can be made to work together. Much of the technology being tested these days involves RFID, radio frequency identification. Most people know that technology from their building and parking pass cards. In this study, a small RFID tag or transponder has been placed in Olga Gelbart's shoe. It constantly sends out a unique radio signal that can be picked up by readers scattered throughout the house. And that tiny transponder could lead to some big changes in the way Olga lives. First, Olga no longer needs her keys. Hello, Olga. Welcome home. 
Olga's door has been programmed to unlock whenever she comes near. When she walked over the doormat, the antenna out here received a radio signal carrying that unique signature from the transponder and seeing that it was Olga who walked over the doormat, the door unlocks for her. RFID will also come in handy when Olga goes looking for her car keys in the morning. An RFID tag on those keys sends out a signal picked up by antennas and receivers throughout the house. Now in the morning when uh, uh, Olga has to run for her work and she just can't find her keys, what she all has to do is ask the home where the keys are. And because most of the shelves would have an uh, antenna connected to the receiver, the host system would identify that the keys are there, say, on shelf number two on the TV cabinet. Olga can use a Palm Pilot or any of the computers in the house to search for items like that. With RFID, she doesn't need to turn on the coffee. It's programmed to start up the first time she walks in the door at night. With RFID, devices and appliances can be programmed to turn on and off as you enter or move about the house. This can be done without rewiring the whole house by using a system called X10. That system allows computers with X10 software to use the existing electrical wiring in the home to control electrical devices, appliances, and lights. Making technologies like X10 and RFID work together in the home is exactly what this lab is all about. We are solving the how to get everything to work together problem called interoperability, and we're also working with manufacturers on the standard side, which is again a sort of a, a techie issue, but it's a very important one. Manufacturers want RFID tags on their products. A receiver in the fridge could keep track of what goes into and out of the fridge. A computer could order more water when it senses that all the bottles that were put in have been taken out. And that means no more shopping lists. In this home, the computer system also provides security. When the doorbell rings, a camera sends an image to the terminals throughout the home. So Olga knows instantly whether she wants to answer the door or not. The integration of so many different functions into one central computer system is what makes this 21st century house so attractive to some, but so frightening to others. I think people are interested and intrigued, but some people immediately are concerned. They're concerned about the amount of information that the home is going to have to gather in order to be able to provide the services. So they're immediately concerned about the data collection, the, the possible privacy implications. You wouldn't want hackers to access a database that could tell them how much beer you drank last month or what time visitors came and went. Those are the issues the scientists in this lab are trying to confront. But they know some people won't mind trading a little bit of privacy for the benefit of never again searching for the remote control. The remote is on the shelf above the TV. Most of the technology in this home is available right now. Tying it all together to work seamlessly in a way that's easy to use and mindful of your privacy could take about five more years. But when that happens, You'll have a lot more time on your hands to, uh, well, that part's entirely up to you. When we come back, picking up the pieces of a scientific tragedy. Some new revelations about a collection of dinosaur bones that were lost at sea during the First World War.
This is the microchip that could one day be implanted under the skin of every single American. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. Top CFR Lieutenant Diane Sawyer for eight minutes sat there in a sickening fashion with this poor, pathetic family as they discussed how they were all taking microchips because they believed in America and wanted to stop the terrorist. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something out of a science fiction horror movie. They're taking chips because they stand with the mother government. I'm living in Nazi Germany Twilight Zone. Now politicians are announcing that they want to get chipped. 